Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring this video. This is my YouTube studio where I spend most of my time. I will be doing a proper studio tour soon and today I'll take you through my gaming and streaming setup. By the way, I am camera shy but I'm not that camera shy. I just wanted today to be a little bit more about the gear. This setup is split into this desk area and the TV area at the back of the studio. I love having a dedicated space for content creation. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I started off from a tiny room at home and about a year ago, I moved into this space. The space itself has had quite a few building issues recently but I'm almost happy with how it is right now. I'll share more on that in my full studio tour coming up. This is my gaming PC. It's been a dream of mine for many years to have a dedicated gaming rig. It took me months and months of research and lots of stress putting it together, but here it is. There are a couple of things I'd like to upgrade it still, but it's coming along nicely. It's about 90% complete, I'd say. The case I went with is the wonderful Height Y60. I love the shape and this fish tank look. The tempered glass makes it look ultra modern and it's super cool to be able to show off all the internal components. The Height Y60 has plenty of room for expansion and it looks great. And if I'm really honest, as a total noob building a PC, I really enjoy that extra space that it has. I am building another PC using this beautiful fractal case, but that will be on another video. For this build, I went with the Intel i9-13900K processor and an MSI Supreme RTX 4090 graphics card this combo makes this PC an absolute beast, it handles all my gaming without breaking a sweat. I do have another desk set up where I do my video editing from, which is powered by my Apple M1 Max MacBook Pro, but I'd still love to see how this PC I built would handle my video editing workflow. The RTX 4090 is the most powerful graphics card on the market, it can run the most demanding games at ultra settings. This means that I can enjoy the best possible graphics and performance in my games. I tested this gaming PC with a variety of games as you can see here. The graphics were amazing and the frame rates were extremely smooth. I was also able to stream these games without any issues too. As you can probably tell, I'm super happy with this PC and paired up with this Alienware ultrawide gaming monitor that I've got behind me here, the gaming experience has been sublime. The Alienware Ultrawide is a curved QD OLED monitor. This bad boy was named by many reviewers out there the best gaming monitor of 2022. After a year, some still regard this monitor as one of the best still and because it's not as new, you may be able to find it for a much more reasonable price. And while I share with you some information about today's sponsor Surfshark, you can appreciate the display quality. Surfshark's been a great app for me, extremely robust, but also very simple to use. One of my favorite features is how easy it is to share the subscription across all my devices. I have lots of Apple devices, but I also use Android and of course this gaming PC, which is now Windows. Every device is protected the same way at no extra cost to me. In today's world, right, it's super important to have as many protection barriers as possible. And Surfshark offers more than one way of protection. There's the VPN aspect, of course, which helps me when I'm accessing a public Wi-Fi. You never really know if there's someone monitoring your usage or trying to steal your information. It might be a cafe or a hotel. We rely so much on storing our passwords in our browsers, in our password managers, on our PCs. So I love how Surfshark VPN puts a, a mask, if you like, encrypting our connection, which means any hackers out there would have a really hard time snooping on you, you know, to find out what you're doing or where you're doing it from. And it doesn't stop there. Another two great ways that Surfshark helps me is when I'm online shopping or watching content. I can very easily just change my IP address to a different country and look for the best online deals or I can browse streaming services and watch content that are country specific. And the great news for you is that with my code AlexGTech you get an exclusive deal and three extra months for free. Just use the link in the description and the promo code to get started. And thanks again Surfshark for making this video possible. Back to the video. It's strictly speaking a gaming monitor but every time I used it for admin work or to record a video podcast or things like that, I had no issues. In a previous video, I even hooked this up to an M2 Mac Mini, which I still use from time to time. I've been using this monitor since December 2022, and after 7 months, there is absolutely no burn in. I love how I can route all the cables behind it, and despite that fit being quite large, it fits well in my setup. I might mount it to a monitor arm in future, but for now it just sits here under my Hexcal Studio. More about the hex cow later in the video. The only issue with this monitor I found is how you're not able to upgrade the firmware yourself. It hasn't been an issue for me, but if I stick with this monitor for another year or so, this could become an issue. These lovely cables that you're seeing here are the incredible Aohi cable set. Honestly, it's a small thing, but these cables make such a big difference to my setup. This is their future creative power cable set. I love how good they look, but more importantly, I love the build quality of these cables. They can support up to 240 watts of power delivery through USB-C 
And if you have Apple devices or Android devices, these cables are perfect for both. It comes with both USB-C and Lightning connections. Check this out though. You can use the small parts of the cable, of course, but the great thing about these cables is how you can extend any part of the setup. They are super flexible, allowing me to connect them to a charger and even power up my MacBook when I'm sitting in the couch. They look awesome and much better than the massive cable that I had before. And the other cool thing about these cables is that they have this color code to tell you how fast your device is being charged. It will go green for low current, blue for standard charging, and blinking yellow for fast charging. I've tested this with Android tablets, iPads, iPhones, and Android smartphones of all kinds. It works perfectly every time. It's even good enough for data transfer. Superb quality, really. Every now and then I come across a product that really makes a difference. Like I said, it's only a small thing, but makes me happy when I look at the aesthetics on the desk. My desk mat is this gorgeous felt mat by Grovemade, and the mouse mat is from Glorious. I love Glorious mats for gaming, especially the XL sized ones. Not the best looking, I've got to say, but they feel amazing. I actually really like the mouse pad that came with my graphics card, but it wasn't big enough and I spilled some coffee on it as well, so I had to upgrade to this one from Glorious. They really understand gaming though, you know? The mouse I have in this setup is the Logitech Gaming Mouse, which has been a great revelation for me. I bought it for gaming, but I found it to be superb for other tasks too, like admin work or even video and photo editing. The battery lasts a long time and it feels super light. Lots of customizable buttons via the Logitech software and just a really satisfying feel to Talking it. Talking about satisfying, I'll shut up now for a moment so you can hear the beautiful sound of the glorious keyboard I'm using. For reference, this is the GMM K2 model. Amazing, right? The keycaps feel great to the touch. It's only my second mechanical keyboard ever, but this thing got me hooked into mechanical keyboards. I can't live without my numpad, so I went with a full keyboard, but they also do a compact version, which looks lovely too. These keycaps and switches are completely hot swappable, so you can customize it further. Maybe I will build a custom one next, but for now, I'm super happy with it. My only criticism is that when you're using this keyboard with a Mac, you kind of have to guess where the Mac keys are, but 90% of the time, I'm using it for gaming anyway, so not that big of an issue. The top frame material is aluminium, or aluminum if you're in the US, which gives it a nice weight. It has a nice um, sturdiness to it. I love the contrasty colors against my desk, and I think it really complements my setup. And if you don't like that orange glorious logo on the keycap, they send you a spare keycap as well, so you can replace it if you want to. Coming over to my audio setup, this is my trusty Focusrite 2i2 audio interface. Not the most expensive out there, but the reason I love it so much is how it makes this Shure SM7B sound. Since starting the channel, I've tried many configurations with the SM7B here. I tried the Rodecaster Pro, the Rodecaster Pro 2, which is okay actually, but I've tried it with and without a cloud lifter. And for me, the best I managed to make this microphone sound is with the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. They have a nice 4-channel version too, but for this setup, 2 inputs and 2 outputs was all I needed really. My headphones of choice are not actually gaming headphones, but I love how comfortable they are and of course how they sound. This is the Rode NTH100 over-the-year headphones. They're fairly new in the market, I've been using them since launch and I take them with me everywhere. I've tried the Biodynamics, Apple AirPods Max of course, but the one I use the most is this one, the Rode NTH100. The ear cups are made with Alcantara material and the comfort it gives me is second to none really. You can use the cable on the left or right hand side which is really convenient. The cable itself is of great quality too and allows for connecting straight to your computer or to the audio interface by using the 3.5mm to quarter inch adapter. When I'm feeling a little bit more adventurous though, I use my monitor speakers for gaming, which are just incredible. These are the Rocket 5 monitor speakers from KRK. You can manually control them at the back for specific audio profiles, but I use it pretty much how it was out of the box and you know, the default settings here, and I'm always so impressed by how good they sound. I did buy some stands for them as well, but I quite like to have them on the desk itself. This way, whenever I move the desk to a standing position, the speakers stay at my ear level, which is great. And actually, just before I talk about my streaming setup, a quick reminder to like this video if you're enjoying, of course, and have a look on the channel after this video. And if you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed. I'm here at least once a week with a down-to-earth tech video for you. Coming over now to my streaming setup, it's actually quite straightforward despite how much gear it's involved. I have my main video camera on a rolling stand. This cover you see around the camera is basically my teleprompter because I'm pretty useless without a teleprompter. This rolling stand is from newer, it's fairly heavy duty and I have to add, I have a bit of an obsession for them now. I just love how easily I can move the entire video setup you know, when I need it. 
There's a lot of natural light coming into the building here, which can be a blessing, but also a curse. So being able to slightly adjust the angle sometimes is really useful. And without those wheels, it would be really painful to do. I have three cameras in the setup, the Sony a7S III, which is my main camera for the last couple of years. And that's the camera I use to record all of the footage that you're seeing now. I also have a Sony ZV-E10, which is a fantastic camera for vlogging, but because it has the same color profiles as my Sony a7S III, it made sense to me to use it as my second angle. I have a few lenses as you can see here, the 24mm which is the main one for my A-roll setup, but I also have a Tamron lens at 28-75mm and a 35mm anamorphic lens from Surrey. For a closer look into products and macro shots, I use the Sony 90mm 2.8 lens. The third camera I have is a 4K webcam by Insta360, superb camera for running online meetings for work, but I use this camera a lot when I don't feel like firing up the entire streaming setup. It really is good enough for anything. I reviewed this camera on the channel before and I use it on a daily basis. It has plenty of smart features and I get so many comments from people at work because the quality is just so good. I have to take my hats off to people who do streaming on a daily basis because there's so much gear involved and even though I've been doing this for about three years now, I still find streaming a little bit daunting. Using something like a Hexhouse Studio has been super helpful though, you know, for hiding the power cables and all the mess that I've got here. I have a cable tray under the desk as well for anything that is not in the Hexcal. The Hexcal Studio is an awesome product that serves so many purposes. It's quite a unique product, quite expensive too. I've had it for about six to seven months now and I still love it. It has a built-in ambient light, lots of storage inside, plenty of power connectors, USB-C connectivity, and even a built-in wireless charger, which you can use to charge two devices at once. With streaming and recording videos in general, one thing that's extremely useful to have on the desk is a docking station. On this desk, I'm using the CalDigit TS4, which is one of the stars of the show here. This is their fourth generation, and is fast becoming a must have for any setup that needs the ultimate connectivity. It has 18 ports, which is insane. In fact, that's the most of any Thunderbolt docks out there. It's made out of solid aluminum, and I just love how clean it looks on my setup. All USB ports on this dock are 10 gigabit ports, none of that cheap five gig stuff that we see in some other options. And the ethernet is 2.5 gigs per second, which is great for gaming and streaming. One of these ports on the TS4 can be used for fast charging devices too, like a tablet or a smartphone, and the SD card slot is pretty satisfying as well. Not many will have this little spring lock mechanism and it's a tiny detail I know, but I really like it. I'll probably hide the TS4 under the desk at some point, but because of the material they used here, it doesn't look too out of place. My desk itself is a standing desk, very similar to the Ergon Office brand in North America. This is from a Swedish brand called Friska. Extremely sturdy desk, even when standing, I love them so much that I have two of them. I also have a smaller flexi-spot desk here in the studio that's currently being used for my son's gaming setup and I'll leave a link to a video where I featured all of these. Now one of the most important parts of this setup is my gaming chair. This is the Secret Lab Titan gaming chair. I will be reviewing this more fully in a separate video but this has been another great revelation for me. I gotta be honest though, I never really saw the fascination with gaming chairs and didn't really like the way they looked, but I was really surprised when I actually tried one. Secret Lab seemed to have evolved so much and you're able to find some great designs now. You can adjust so many things in this chair, the tension, the armrest, the backrest, and they really go quite some way down as well. I find this great for whenever I'm having a break and you know, it's great for relaxing, extremely comfortable. Most importantly, they feel great when gaming for those longer sessions. Right at the back here, I've got my console gaming area. I'm constantly changing this area, but it's got to a point where I'm happy to share with you. The cabinet is a very basic one from Ikea, and the TV, which is the main attraction here, is the 65-inch Samsung Neo QLED AK TV. Incredible TV for gaming, it's my first ever AK TV, and because of its AK features, I actually use it a lot for my video backdrops now. Gaming on this feels incredibly immersive. I have a lot of daylight here in the studio, but the TV is bright enough that I can play during the day without any problems. But of course, the TV really comes to life when it's a bit darker. And because it's a 2022 model, the price has come down considerably, almost to the same price as a decent 4K TV. It has a dedicated gaming mode, which will prioritize refresh rate and really push the performance a little further. The framed prints in the background are from a company called East of Nowhere, and they do some incredible maps. I have the Brazil and the United Kingdom representing where I live and where I come from. And if you're wondering where I will be, I'm here at least once a week with a down-to-earth tech video for you, and I will be doing more of this setup video, so make sure you subscribe for more. See you soon.